Um, I think it's one of those things that I don't often think about. Um, occasions like this, obviously, I think about it, and then I have a slight sense of surprise that here I am. Um, probably as surprised that I'm a judge as that I'm a trans judge, in a way. Um, it's just amazing how much time has passed, and here I am, I've, I've found myself doing this job. I suppose I don't think of myself in the day job as being a trans judge. Um, the judge job is what I do primarily. Sometimes, though, being from the LGBT community helps. Um, you can have a case where something to do with that subject comes up or you need to appreciate the needs of that community or the views that other people might have about that community so it can inform my, my practice. Um, but in terms of being, how do I feel about being a trans judge? I suppose it puts me more in the public eye to some extent. Um, and it makes me feel that to some extent that I've got a responsibility to try to encourage other people to come forward. So far, I think I'm still probably the only trans judge I don't, in this country, although I know that there are some in other parts of the world that have come forward, if you like, later. Um, it could be that there'll be more in the pipeline, I hope so. Um, and I'd love to see that in the years to come uh, because it would be nice to find a time where I'm not going to be asked the question about being the first or indeed the only. It would be nice to see a spread of people from all parts of the community as judges. At the time before I applied to be a judge, um, you had to declare that you were gay, lesbian, or, uh, well, you weren't even asked about being transgender back then. And the implication was that that was a negative. It was uh, in the part of the, the application form where you would have to s declare something that might affect your standing or your character. And of course, in practice, I think most gay and lesbian people either didn't apply or, or presumably didn't, didn't declare that. And, there came a time in my career when that was very publicly abolished as a requirement and that sent a signal that the judiciary I think had modernised to the extent that if you were gay or lesbian that didn't mean you were excluded and that certainly came as a great encouragement to me. Once people could apply, what I saw I think is a gradual shift from it's okay to be gay, you are allowed to be a judge, to more uh, of it being positive. I think it's a time, unlike, say, Pride Week, where you get out and you celebrate, I think, as the name suggests, it's a time also to think about history and to think about how far we've come, um, how far we perhaps have to go in some ways, um, particularly just going back to what I said about being a trans judge. You don't see many trans or gender variant people as judges, so we still have a history yet to make. Um, but it is a time for reflecting. It's a time of thinking about people once known in the past, uh, perhaps whose careers were, were blighted or um, people who died along the way. Um, so it's partly about memorialising, it is partly about celebrating as well. Um, and it's also, I think, partly about recognising that there is value in celebrating and remembering that part of a cultural history that might otherwise be, have been brushed under the carpet um, and which in the past wasn't recognised as a valid history. Well, in terms of moments, I think um, really t two moments, if you can call them moments, I'm afraid they're just legislative moments. The one, of course, is the uh, passage of the Gender Recognition Act, which um, enabled people such as me to uh, modify birth certificates. I got on just fine without modifying my birth certificate. I transitioned in the late 90s because I could change every other document, but nonetheless, that imposed the sense that if you were applying for a job and someone asked you, you would have to be outing yourself. And um, that's a, just a rather intrusive, slightly intimidating thing to have to do. It's made a huge difference to a lot of people's lives. Uh, the other moment is the passage of, of course, the Civil Partnership Act, uh, when it was first enacted, which enabled people like me to enter into civil partnerships, as, as I did. In terms of role models from history, so if you like, human moments spread over time, um, I think the person that comes to, to, to my mind is Alan Turing, the scientist. Um, he uh, was, he's well known, of course, to the public as, as the person who played such a big role in decoding uh, codes during the war and saved a lot of lives by shortening the war. But I came across his work uh, in the context of studying artificial intelligence at university and reading his papers there. Now, he, despite being a great scientist, was prosecuted in the 1950s and was 
punished by being given female hormones and it's thought he committed suicide. Um, and he was such a brilliant man that when it comes to history, I think he's a, he's a figure, he's, he's a figure in my mind that is someone that I think is important to me as a, as a role model.